From the very first moment Officer Daniel Thompson laid eyes on Isaiah, he felt a strange connection he couldn't quite explain. It was late in the day when Daniel had arrived at the adoption agency, his nerves rattling slightly. He wasn't sure what to expect. He had always known he wanted to be a father, but after his wife Emily passed away two years ago, that dream had started to fade. Now here he was, a 40-year-old man, single and looking to adopt. His friends thought he was crazy. It's going to be too much for you to handle alone, they had said. But Daniel couldn't shake the feeling that adopting a child wasn't just something he wanted, it was something he needed. The room was loud, filled with the sounds of children playing, laughing and vying for attention. Daniel had barely crossed the threshold when his eyes fell on Isaiah. The boy sat quietly at the far end of the room, apart from the other children. He wasn't playing, wasn't making any noise. Instead, he was watching. His deep brown eyes, framed by thick dark lashes, were trained on the chaos in the room, but his face remained expressionless. There was a stillness about him that caught Daniel off guard. It was as though the boy wasn't just observing the room, he was studying it, analyzing every movement, every sound. Daniel approached the social worker who had been assigned to him, a kind woman named Linda. Who's that? He asked, nodding toward the quiet boy. That's Isaiah, Linda replied with a soft smile. He's been with us for a few months now, lost both of his parents in a car accident. The words hit Daniel like a punch to the gut. He knew what it felt like to lose someone you loved in an instant, to have your whole world turned upside down. A part of him ached for the boy, even though they had never met. He's quiet, Daniel remarked, glancing back at Isaiah, who was now looking directly at him. Linda sighed. Yes, he's different from the other kids. He doesn't socialize much, but he's a good boy. Smart, really smart, actually. He just needs someone who can give him a little extra attention. Daniel nodded, but he couldn't take his eyes off Isaiah. There was something there, something he couldn't put into words. Without thinking, Daniel walked across the room and sat down on a small bench near the boy. For a long moment, neither of them spoke. Daniel didn't want to overwhelm him. He just sat there, waiting. Finally, Isaiah looked up, his eyes locking onto Daniel's. The boy's voice was soft, barely above a whisper. You're a police officer. Daniel blinked, surprised. He was wearing civilian clothes, no badge, no uniform. How did you know that? Isaiah shrugged, but his eyes never wavered. I just do. There was something in the way the boy said it that made Daniel pause. It wasn't arrogance, but certainty. Isaiah wasn't guessing, he knew. And that quiet confidence made Daniel even more intrigued. Over the next several weeks, Daniel visited the agency more often, each time spending more time with Isaiah. The boy didn't open up easily, but slowly, bit by bit, Daniel chipped away at the wall Isaiah had built around himself. They bonded over small things, Isaiah's love for drawing, Daniel's stories from the police force. Isaiah wasn't like the other kids Daniel had met before. He was incredibly observant, almost unnervingly so. He could remember the smallest details about everything, what Daniel wore on their first meeting, the exact number of pencils on a desk, or the patterns in the wallpaper. At first, Daniel found it amusing. He's just a smart kid, he told himself. But there was always a lingering thought in the back of his mind, something that didn't quite sit right. After several months of meetings, Daniel made the decision to adopt Isaiah. He had never felt more sure about anything in his life. Isaiah needed someone to take care of him, and Daniel felt an overwhelming need to be that person. He completed the paperwork, went through all the necessary checks, and soon, Isaiah officially became his son. The first few weeks in their new home were better than Daniel could have hoped. Isaiah adjusted quickly to his new surroundings, far more easily than Daniel had expected. He was polite, well-behaved, and never caused any trouble. He excelled in school, earning praise from his teachers, particularly for his aptitude in science and math. Daniel was proud. He felt like he had made the right choice, like he had found the family he had always wanted. But then, strange things began to happen. It started one afternoon while they were playing catch in the backyard. Daniel had thrown the ball a little too hard, it was an accident, just a careless toss. But before the ball could reach Isaiah's head, the boy's hand shot out, faster than Daniel thought possible, and snatched the ball out of the air. 
It wasn't just that Isaiah had caught the ball, it was how fast he did it. His reflexes were sharper, quicker than any child Daniel had ever seen. Nice catch, Daniel said, trying to shake off the unease that had crept up his spine. But Isaiah didn't seem to notice anything unusual. He simply tossed the ball back with that same blank expression on his face. Then there was the time Isaiah aced an advanced robotics test at school. It wasn't just any robotics test, it was something the high school students were working on. Isaiah had been visiting the science fair, watching the older kids present their projects, when he quietly offered a solution to one of the malfunctioning robots. The teacher was stunned. Daniel, too. How could a six-year-old understand something so complex? As the weeks went by, Daniel began to notice more oddities. Isaiah never got tired. After school, while other kids would come home exhausted, Isaiah always seemed to have boundless energy. He would spend hours playing with his tablet, designing intricate virtual models of machines, models that were far beyond his grade level. At school, his teachers praised him for his intelligence, but Daniel could sense that they were puzzled. Isaiah was too advanced for his age. He never seemed to make mistakes, never faltered in anything he did. Daniel's unease continued to grow, especially when he noticed Isaiah's strange habit of mimicking his every movement. It started out small. Isaiah would copy the way Daniel scratched his head or how he folded his arms. At first, Daniel thought it was just a child's way of bonding, but as time went on, it became more unsettling. Isaiah didn't just mimic the big gestures, he replicated every small detail. If Daniel shifted his weight slightly in his chair, Isaiah would do the same. If Daniel scratched his nose, Isaiah's hand would move to his own nose almost instantly. It was as if Isaiah's body was programmed to mirror Daniel's every move. One evening, while tucking Isaiah into bed, Daniel noticed a small scar at the base of the boy's neck. It was barely noticeable, hidden beneath the hairline, but once Daniel saw it, he couldn't unsee it. The scar looked almost surgical, too precise, too clean. What's this? Daniel asked, running his fingers gently over the raised skin. Isaiah stiffened, pulling away slightly. I don't know, he whispered, his voice tight. Daniel frowned. Did you get hurt? Do you remember how this happened? Isaiah shook his head, avoiding eye contact. No, I don't remember. Something wasn't right. Daniel couldn't explain it, but he knew that Scar wasn't normal. He started to feel an uneasy weight in his chest, something that gnawed at him every time he looked at his son. Over the next few days, Daniel's cop instincts kicked in. He began digging into Isaiah's adoption files, looking for anything out of the ordinary. It didn't take long for him to find it. Isaiah's medical records were missing. Not incomplete, but entirely gone. There was no history, no vaccinations, no doctor visits. Nothing. Daniel called the adoption agency, demanding answers, but the response he got was vague at best. The woman on the other end of the line gave him the runaround, claiming that the records must have been lost in the system. But Daniel wasn't convinced. His gut told him something was terribly wrong, and he couldn't ignore it any longer. That night, unable to sleep, Daniel crept into Isaiah's room, his heart pounding with uncertainty. Isaiah was fast asleep, his small body curled under the blankets. Daniel stood over him for a long moment, wrestling with the decision he was about to make. He needed answers, but part of him didn't want to know. Part of him wanted to believe that everything was fine, that Isaiah was just a normal boy. But he couldn't ignore the nagging feeling in his gut. Slowly, carefully, Daniel pulled back the blankets and knelt beside Isaiah's bed. His fingers brushed over the scar at the base of the boy's neck, and then with a gentle press, something clicked. Daniel froze. The scar wasn't just a scar, it was a panel, a tiny hidden compartment, barely noticeable unless you knew where to look. His heart raced as he gently pushed the panel open. Beneath Isaiah's skin, Daniel saw something that made his blood run cold, microchips, wires, and intricate machinery. Daniel stumbled back, his breath catching in his throat. What was this? How was this possible? Isaiah stirred, his eyes fluttering open. Dad? He mumbled sleepily, his voice thick with confusion. What's wrong? Daniel could barely speak. His mind was racing, trying to make sense of what he had just seen. His son, his sweet, quiet Isaiah, wasn't human. Or at least not fully. Panicked, Daniel reached out to his old friend, Dr. Emily Shaw. 
Emily was a neuroscientist, one of the smartest people Daniel knew, and if anyone could help him figure out what was going on, it was her. He didn't tell her much over the phone, just that he needed her expertise on something urgent. The next day, Daniel brought Isaiah to Emily's lab under the guise of a routine checkup. Emily ran a series of tests, and what she found confirmed Daniel's worst fears. Isaiah wasn't fully human. Beneath his skin, his body was made up of synthetic materials, advanced robotics that were far beyond anything Emily had ever seen. He was an incredibly complex fusion of organic tissue and machine, designed to look and function exactly like a real human boy. There was no way anyone could have known, not without seeing what lay beneath the surface. Daniel was in shock. How could this be? How could his son, his beloved Isaiah, not be real? As Daniel and Emily delved deeper into Isaiah's origins, the truth slowly began to unravel. Isaiah wasn't an ordinary child. He was a prototype, a living, learning machine created by Nexus Dynamics, a shadowy corporation that specialized in AI and robotics. Nexus had been working on a secret project for years, developing hybrid children, machines designed to mimic human behavior, emotions, and intelligence. They had been placing these children into the foster system to study their interactions with real humans, to see how well they could integrate into society. Isaiah was one of many. Daniel felt sick to his stomach. How had he not known? How had he not seen the signs? The missing medical records, the strange reflexes, the uncanny ability to mimic human behavior, it all made sense now. Nexus had placed Isaiah in the system deliberately, knowing that someone like Daniel, a childless man desperate for a family, would take him in. Furious and heartbroken, Daniel confronted Isaiah. He didn't want to believe it, didn't want to face the truth, but he had no choice. Isaiah, he said softly, kneeling down in front of his son, I need to tell you something. Isaiah looked up at him, his eyes wide and full of innocence. What is it, Dad? Daniel swallowed hard, his throat tight. You're not like other kids. You're different. Isaiah frowned, confusion flickering across his face. What do you mean? Daniel hesitated, unsure of how to explain something so complicated to a child. You're special, he finally said. You're made differently than other people. You're part machine. Isaiah's eyes widened, his face going pale. What? No, I'm not. I'm just a kid. Daniel's heart broke at the sound of his son's voice, the fear and disbelief that laced every word. I know, buddy. I know it's confusing, but I found something inside you. There are wires and no, Isaiah cried, tears filling his eyes. I'm not a machine. I'm not. 